Hello everyone, this is Reza Rad from Radicad and today I'm going to talk about one of the really common questions we have in Power BI data modeling that should you create a snapshot fact table or should you implement it using DAX measures? Let's see uh, what are pros and cons of each and answer that question. I get this question a lot in my data modeling courses or under my data modeling articles and videos that should I create like a snapshot fact table or should I implement it using DAX measures in Power BI? Now, some of you might not be familiar with the term of snapshot fact table. Uh, let me explain how what it is. And the snapshot fact table is a little bit different from a transactional fact table. Transactional fact table, like, like the sales, fact table, for example, is a table that you have a record in that table when an action happens, like when there is a sales transaction, you have one record in this table. For example, at this date, uh, 18th of January 2020, for that product, uh, that customer came to that store and purchased something, right? And then the next transaction, the next transaction. If there is no happening of an action, there is no record here. Like for example, at the day of 19, let's say for some reason there was no transaction, there was no sales, uh, so there is no transaction here. Versus comparing this with the snapshot fact table, a snapshot fact table stores snapshots of the data. These snapshots are either like time-based, date-based, uh, year-based, weekly-based, sometimes even like minutes or second-based. Uh, so there's a snapshot and there are also some other uh, dimensions around it. For example, you want to see the stock on hand in the uh, as the inventory of the warehouse uh, for every product. So we have the product column, we have the warehouse column, and for every date, we calculate how many of that products we have in that warehouse, what is the value. These uh, highlighted records are, let's say, those dates that we had a change or a movement. But you see that even if there is no movement, for example, at the 19th of January, there is no movement. I still have that one record with that value. Still, considering that no movement had happened, considering that no action happened, I still see this record. Because that's a snapshot. A snapshot should have a record for that time-based snapshot, even if there is nothing happening there, right? So you can see that, like the snapshot fact table is getting much bigger than the normal transactional table. Normally, a snapshot fact table is like one of the biggest tables in your data warehouse. The size of a snapshot fact table really depends on how many dimensions you have in that table. And what is the cardinality, which basically means what is the number of elements you have in each uh, dimension. Uh, as an example, consider this. Let's say we want to do a stock on hand calculation for 10 years and uh, on a daily basis in 10 different warehouses and in each warehouse uh, and let's say uh, 1,000 products altogether. Calculating a size of a snapshot Fact table is basically just a multiply of values from each of these. So we have 10 years, 365 days in each year, multiply 10 warehouse, multiply 1000 products. Remember, if there is no change in any row, in, in, in any date, you still need that. That is why size of snapshot fact table calculating that it's really simple. So this becomes like 36 and a half million rows just for something like that. And if this becomes like 20 warehouse, this becomes like 70 rows, 70 million rows. If this becomes like 20 years, that would become 140 million rows. You can see how significantly this will grow. The size of a snapshot fact table is normally huge. It depends on the granularity, but normally it is a big table. How you build these snapshot fact tables, there are different ways to build it. One way is that you can have it in the data source like using different methods, you can build it in the, data warehouse, uh, in the data warehouse. You can use some transformation tools, such as SSIS, Azure Data Factory, Informatica, some other tools to build it. 
Uh, if you are good at SQL scripting, you can use T-SQL stored procedures, views, and things like that to build it. In the world of Power BI, you can do that using Power Query or Dataflow, or you can even do that using DAX, calculated tables in DAX. All of these methods are pre-calculated. This means that they will impact the ETL process uh, of your model, not the, uh, let's say, runtime uh, performance of your report. However, because the table is big, it might impact the performance of your model because of the size. Uh, what is the alternative of this way? Uh, an alternative for uh, snapshot fact table is not to create the table, but to uh, write some DAX calculations and DAX measures to, um, to overcome that. And because DAX measures are dynamic, you can write measures that calculate uh, these based on the filter context in your report. For example, in your report, you can have like one row per year, per day, whatever you want. And these calculations happens on that. I have a blog uh, article with an example of calculating a stock on hand all using DAX measures, if you are interested in that. And the link to that is down uh, from my article down in the description below. Uh, so then now the question is that, well, we have two methods. One is DAX measures to calculate it. One is to create the snapshot table. What is the best method to, do, to use? The answer is that uh, there is no like one single solution for everyone. This depends. It really depends on your requirement, on the way that implementation works, on all of those. There is no like one hat that fits everyone. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. For example, one scenario is that we want uh, really big period snapshots. For example, we want snapshot for every year. We want yearly snapshots. Let's say we are not really interested in looking at daily uh, level data or even monthly. Yearly is what we need. And we want to do that only for, let's say, product categories level. So considering that, this would be like 10 years and one record per year, uh, per year actually, that shouldn't be per day, and then uh, seven product categories, that's 70 rows, right? And this is a uh, really small table. Like if you add a table with 70 rows into your model, you, you won't probably notice any performance difference at all. So this is a good example to be calculated, pre-calculated as a snapshot table using all of those methods that I explained before. However, if scenario is different, if this is a really detailed snapshot, like that snapshot calculation I showed you at the beginning, that we had like 70 million rows in a table. Now, I'm not saying that Power BI can't handle 70 million of rows of data. It can handle petabytes of data and billions of rows of data, definitely. I have some blog articles about aggregations and how you can get it working super fast. The point here is that you don't really want a 70 million rows table just for the sake of calculating something such as stock on hand, which is one simple calculation. It gives you a huge table where you can do this calculation with a simple DAX measure, right? For this scenario, I would do it as a DAX measure dynamically calculated. Now, how you can really choose which method to use, because those are just two sample scenarios. Your scenario might be totally different. Understanding the pros and cons of each model is important, like uh, each method is important. For example, if you do things in DAX measures, one of the good things is that you don't really need a huge snapshot fact table when you are using DAX measures because everything is calculated dynamically. Uh, and because calculations in DAX are dynamic, they work based on your filter context in the report. It would be faster for your dataset refresh time. For example, if you use Power Query to calculate uh, to pre-calculate your snapshot fact table, sometimes it takes a little bit longer because that transformation might be quite a slow transformation process versus doing all of these in DAX measure would not impact your dataset refresh time. However, the disadvantages are of this is that if you have like too many DAX measures, this might make your report slow, depends on how you write your DAX measures. And uh, another thing is that because these are all calculated in DAX, it is this calculation is only available using Power BI. If later on you want to use this, let's say in Power apps or any other applications, because these are written in DAX, they are only accessible 
through Power BI. Uh, pros and cons of the snapshot fact table is exactly the opposite of that. So if you pre-calculate a snapshot fact table, the good thing about that is that because these are all pre-calculated, you don't really uh, have any runtime performance problem of the report. There is no calculation happening runtime. Uh, another benefit is that because you are calculating it, pre-calculating it and storing it in the table, you can even use that result in other applications. Depends on, again, which technology or which method you use to create that table. Disadvantages, however, are that sometimes your snapshot fact table gets really big, really huge, and you need to consider something about it, like using aggregation and things like that. Otherwise, this might bring the performance of the model down. Uh, and uh, another thing is that your dataset refresh time would be a little bit longer because you are uh, doing a lot of transformation, heavy transformations to build it. Important things to consider when deciding uh, first is the size of snapshot fact table. Always have a think about it. You can calculate it really easily like the method that I uh, explained to you. Calculate the size of your snapshot fact table. If this is a big fact table, uh, think about it again. Do you really need a table like that size or you can do it with a couple of measures? Think also about the number of measures, the number of calculations you need per each snapshot. For example, it, if at every day you need like 25 different calculations in your report, that means like 25 measures, all of those calculating snapshot. That might be making things really slow. So consider that as well, like how many calculations is needed for every snapshot. And at the end of the day, implement a solution that works, which basically means that um, something that user can use, right? If you create a report that takes like 10 minutes, five minutes uh, for a user to see the result of that, that's not a really workable solution. You want something that works fast and be reasonable for the user. So if you tried, for example, creating a snapshot table, it isn't really a, a great solution. Switch to DAX measure and see how that works. Uh, I hope this uh, video helps you to understand how the process of deciding of this is. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And until next video, see you later. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into your YouTube channel. We have Power BI and AI weekly videos. Thank you.